just standing here listening to the steady hum of the little ladies in the tree and I was thinking man you know how quick does the year go by here we are it's been a year since my dad passed away already so we thought as a tribute to the young fella well he wasn't that young really was he I mean I think he was 84 or something which is not a bad effort anyway we thought we'd have a rerun of his interview which we did with him about I reckon it was only a month before he passed away so that was just as well he snuck into the show otherwise he would have missed his chance if you already think you've seen the interview of me dad, don't tune out because it's actually got some really cool new stuff in it. And you know, heck, you only get one go around at this life. And so, you know, cheerio dad and I hope you're having fun up there in heaven. Poor old trees. <sighs> so I was thinking, since my illustrious cameraman turned up out here at the almond block, and I've been using my old knocking mallet to soften up my zinc sulfate because that's hard as crap. So maybe I thought I'd show you a bit of 1960s technology here in Oz. <laughs> this was how we used to knock the bloody almond trees when I was a young fella. That jolly handle used to get that damn hot in the sun, you had to pour your cold water bottle on it so you could pick it up sometimes after you'd had lunch or something. Anyway, you had this hard knock on the end. Tell you what, it'd make a bit of a weapon and all, I reckon, if you whack somebody with it. And then you had to get up, I don't know, which branch am I gonna hit? These trees aren't really designed for it. We used to prune the trees a bit different back in the day. Poor young Nick didn't have any bloody idea what I was talking about with his fancy shoes on. But anyway, here we go. I thought I'd give this a crack. Are you ready? Check this out. And you used to go to that and the almonds would fall off. Not the leaves, well the leaves would come off too, but the almonds would come down and then you had to go around and you used to have to climb the damn tree because you know if you hit hang on I'll show you the lad was just saying am I going to hit the branch down here somewhere he's, he's used to tree shakers and shit that actually isn't man driven but you know check this out if you go and hit it down there nothing happened look at that all you do is get a bloody sore hand <laughs> so you got to pick the little branches like this there you go look at that I even knocked the nut off but he didn't see it <laughs> so like that you used to have to go around and then every now and then You'd bloody misfire and you'd skin your knuckles when you got a bit shitted off or a bit tired. Because you can imagine, you got a bit knackered after a day of that. Come to think of it, you should come down and have a look at the old almond boat under the jolly tree down here and all, while we're out here stuffing around. <laughs> Follow me down here, this is going to our memory lane, I am. Oh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, not normally, I'm not normally the almond man, I'm normally the bee man, but this is, you know, I grew up doing this sort of weird shit, so... If we really got silly, we could actually go and talk to the old man. <laughs> he could give you some stories. So here's the poor old almond boat in the graveyard. <laughs> yeah, we, did, <laughs> we didn't have the heart to throw this one away. <laughs> Although I think we sold a lot of them when we came here because there was still a few old school folk down Wollonga way. But anyway, we had to keep this one. I think we used it for using the irrigation pipes when we first got here, but... Here we have this nice big old long trailer. You used to have a poor old bloody tractor on the front so there's a hitch at the front. So you'd have your old tractor on the front. Now that was a pain in the ass jumping up and down off the tractor all day. I tell you what, that got a bit hard work. And then see this bar here? Well, I hope I don't go through the bottom of it. <laughs> we used to call them sheets, but they were really made out, well, originally they were canvas sheets. Now they were heavy and horrible. And then somebody got real smart and made them out of rack mesh or 50% shade cloth, which is no, no, I've probably got some hanging up in the shed somewhere, but it can't be stuffed. Anyway, they used to be on here, one either side running out, and then you'd run them out either side of the tree, so your tree would be back here somewhere, and you'd run your sheets out around the tree and fold them up, and then they'd knock the tree with this mallet and you know, sticks and hell, I don't know, we used to look a bit like bloody wild cavemen. And then you'd roll the sheets into a, like flick the sheets together, and pull them in and then you have a little bundle of almonds at either end and this was a modern this was a very modern almond boat this one because you could actually take this and put it to the other side so you didn't have to shovel as much so that was pretty clever but anyway hell tell you what i don't think i missed this job one little bit <laughs> that was hard bloody work that was hell you knew you were an almond grower back in those days Thought we'd have a bit of a bit of a delve into the history about um, where we've come from as almond growers. This bloke anyway, and me for that matter. Yeah. So this is my dad, Ross, and he's been an almond grower, well, all, well, a fair bit of your life. A fair bit of my life, since yeah. I was about 35. Yeah. yeah. But just... And now I'm 81. That's it. So that's a fair drive, isn't it? Yeah. 
Keeping with tradition, though, it's good he's had a few career moves <laughs> other than Armour Growing, so that was kind of good. Yeah. Because you, yeah. you were a cheese man. Yeah, I worked in a cheese factory, and I worked in a powder milk factory, and then I looked after a little cheese factory for the company, and then we went to Border Town, and so from there we moved back to Wollonga. And that's where your little orchard was, wasn't it? Yeah, where we a little orchard started there. My father had planted some almonds on a little block up the other end of the paddock and they were doing quite well in the sandy soil but then we planted it in some pretty heavy soil and they didn't go so good. They had a bit of a struggle, but, didn't they? Yeah. But then we bought some other blocks around the district and uh, they are in a better almond growing area so that kept us alive for a little bit longer. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. I'm just flicking through your photo album here. So we were just outside mucking about and I found an old knocking mallet. And because when we were up, up the almond shop, I was trying to tell Nick, Nick the almond board dude up there, that we used to knock almonds by hand. Yeah. And he didn't know what the hell I was talking about. So I thought I'd show the viewers what an almond mallet was. Yeah. And I thought, well, shit, we should pop into the house if you're awake and get you to talk about how crazy almond growing used to be. Pipe. Ready to knock some almonds. First tree. Look on, out. on the beginning of this harvest in 1993, it's Mark going to do the damage. And Ross is waiting impatiently. He can't stop. Ready, Ready. set, go! Oh! Okay. Drum, man. Let them go! Look at the armor's coming down. Yeah, well, it used to be knock the trees with these jolly mallets. Uh, you'd go around the tree and knock the bigger boughs. Yeah. And oh, about 90% of the armors would fall off. And then you'd go around with a stick and stick the rest off. And then you'd have to pull the sheets in and get the armors in the boat. Oh, we used to do the tree a minute. Then you'd take the boat home when it was full. You'd have to shovel them out onto the trays, onto drying trays, and leave them there for two or three days, raking them over and carrying on. And then you'd load the darn things back into the boat, and then you'd cart them to the shed, and then you'd have to shovel them out of the bloody shed again out of the boat again into the shed. <laughs> oh, crumb. And then when it was so high tech, we used to shovel the bloody things back into the cracker machine. That's right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm looking here and I'm reckoning that's me down Wollonga as a little lad. Yeah, that's you, all right, with your snowy hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a pure white hair, yet. <laughs> it couldn't got any whiter. There, yeah, I reckon that's you, proud of your young almond tree. Yeah, I remember that almond tree. That jolly tree was such a good tree that I left it until the last one I was going to plant on that day when I was there. Anyway, of course, as usual, I forgot about it and went away and I came back a fortnight later and the darn thing looked as dead as a doornail. But I still planted it and it was the best one in the orchard. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so there you go. So it didn't matter sitting there for a fortnight. And then I thought, this is a good shot. That's the top of your orchard from the shed. Oh, right. That's where the, all the blossom was. And there's the sand hill where you and Dave, silly little kids, went out there and dug a blooming big channel and were climbing in and out of this bloody thing in the middle of the sand hill. How it didn't collapse on you, I don't know. No, it was rather, it was rather miraculous that we're still here to tell the tale. Hell. Aunt Ede was not impressed when she came across us. Who, whose idea was that? For well, God? it had to be Dave's idea because he was the older brother. Yeah. So she, he was leading me astray. She came <laughs> in and she said, your boys were over there, they're dangerous little wretches. They were over there digging a big cabin in the sand hill and they were inside it. And she said, oh, my gosh, I got rid of them, sent them home. Said, <laughs> Just as well. Don't ever do that again. We were going to sneak back over there, but we got, we got told not to. In no uncertain manner. Yes, I think that might have been the second second hiding I ever got in my life, I reckon, that day. <laughs> I didn't get too many. But... I don't remember giving you a hiding for that. Yeah, you did. I remember giving going to give you a hiding for lighting a fire around the back shed. You and Bindi or whoever it was. No, I think it was just me. Uh, I was just there by myself, I think. Uh, no, here was this bloody fire was burning there. 
right alongside the shed with all the armour was still in there. I had a good reason for why it was there. And and, <laughs> and then I then I thought I was so savage I pulled the belt off my trousers and my bloody trousers fell down. And that <laughs> and so that was the end of the hiding. Yeah. You didn't get one that day. Well I think you tried to hit me but you were laughing yeah, too but, hard. But you ran away. Yeah. And I couldn't run with <laughs> trousers around my ankles, I couldn't run too far. Yeah, yeah. Well I don't blame you for running, do you? <laughs> Still. Now I was positing through and I found these found these photos of your blooming workmen with their beards on. Yeah. You remember a, Remember your workers when they were stirring you up at the end of harvest? Yeah, that's red, red. Rodney and Kim, I reckon, isn't it, with the red beards on? Oh, yeah. That's I'm pretty right. sure that was them with the. Yeah. You got your little grey streaks in there, even, that yeah. you had? You uh, weren't quite that red, but still. Yeah, yeah, we're the wild boys. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And right. I remember one time we were there and we had used Ray Leach's old panel van uh, yeah. to pull the armour boat. Oh, no. And Rodney went, had a fit, went mad, and Kim followed him. And they kicked all the side of the old fan in. And then old Leach had come along and he said, what the hang's going on here? You'll have to pay to get that fixed. What did your men do to it? I said, oh, they just had a lapse of sanity. And they... <laughs> 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 yeah, so that, he was a ringleader. And he was a bit of a rascal, wasn't he? He was a bad boy. Oh, well, but yeah. the, other, the others weren't so bad. Yeah, but he was a good worker, though. That was the trouble. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, when he decided to work, hang it, couldn't keep up with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're going, we're going forward, and I was just looking here. We got all modern, and then we got some ground harvesting equipment, which is a bit similar to what we use now, but, I mean, this was a bit old school, but it was still the sort of the, the versioning flurry machines that we had with old Bevan Shearer. Yeah. And we got the, I got the sweeper there that we used to have on that crazy trailer. Hell, that was a terrible trailer. I remember that thing. And then there's that's the pickup machine we had with the old 65. Oh yeah, yeah. And, then the, and then I found the shaker. Oh right, found that, the shaker that we used to use. That's the old Bowie. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was all right till it fell to bits. <laughs> so this is Rodney's artistic impression of the yeah. shaker. Yeah, there we are. He was he was quite good uh, at drawing these sort of things, and he gave me two or three little ones. But this was the best one he ever made for me. And you see, all my nice red hair. So that was my Christmas present in 1982, 1982. Yeah. yeah. And what's, what's going on with that car? Uh, well, that's another story. Used to store the shaker up in a friend's shed. And of course, then I was bringing it home to get it ready for the arm and knocking. And you said to me, leave the darn thing there. It's Christmas tomorrow. We don't want to be mucking around bringing that home. Christmas, I said, she'll be right, mate. Just let me go, I'll be right. Anyway, I came down the road and- How old was I when I was driving the ute home? Oh, about 14. If I was lucky. If you were lucky, <laughs> about 14. <laughs> and you got the gears jammed. Yes, that's which right. Which have to, used to happen in that old WB ute or whatever it was. Uh, HT, I reckon that ute uh, was. HT ute. And old Mrs. Caffrey come up the road past me and she said, oh, she could see you were stuck down the road. So she pulled up in front of me to tell me that you were in trouble. But then the bloody brakes didn't work on the shaker. Yes, this is so why we were going to leave it there, it was. <laughs> that's why we were going to leave it. Anyway, then I coming up behind her and I could hear the metal going crunch, crunch, a bit like my ribs the other day, crunch, <laughs> crunch, <laughs> until, and then she jumped out of the car and said, oh, haven't you got any brakes on that thing? I said, yeah, they have. But uh, he said, what am I going to do now? I said, oh, well, we're going to report it. No, she said, I've got my Christmas, Christmas turkey in the boot. And I can't <laughs> get the boot undone. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, of course, I thought the interesting part is in the wash up of all of that accident, we weren't 100% convinced that it wasn't, it was my fault because I got the gears, gears jammed. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I think that was, I was great yelling and shouting. Yeah, you, you should have been more astute of how to drive that uncontrollable. But <laughs> You're quite But right. anyway, then the policeman <laughs> came along. Just as well we knew him. <laughs> just as well, he was, a, he is a bit of a character, the old copper at Wollonga at that time. And he said, oh, well, because we had to go and see, report the accident. And he said, what are you two drunk drivers doing out there <laughs> on Christmas Eve, smashing into each other? <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly. Yeah, it says here, Ross, good times.
<laughs> and so we came into the fig tree paddock and the trees there weren't real flat. They had a lot of root rot and, and uh, all sorts of problems. And I whizzed in there and grabbed this tree around the trunk and shook it and it all filled up. The tree just went up in the sky <laughs> and that was the end of that one. And I went along and grabbed the next one that did the same. So I thought, oh, hell, we better stop using the shaker. We better go back to hand knocking. <laughs> so we went back to hand knocking them again after that in that paddock because the tree's roots were all rotten and it, it was no good trying to use the shaker. Yeah. Because there wasn't much crop on the trees anyway. Yeah. There wasn't enough there. For so that, that well, that's what that one's all about. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, yeah. oh dear. Pulled the what trees a, out of the ground. The trees out of the ground, <laughs> not a worry. This is um, one of the rare photos that is of, and I think this photo got, I remember taking this photo because we used to have to do this horrible job called sorting of the almonds once you got them cracked. Poor old mum got this job. She was actually really good at it, so she got this job. But I used to get it quite often being the kid. Somebody used to always be too busy to get under the sorting belt because... I don't know, we always had something else to do, but there was an occasion when we got bogged down and stuff, <laughs> and I got me little, I got me little box brownie out and snapped this photo. You remember that on that rotten sorting belt? Oh, yeah. Golly, we spent some hours on that. No one would believe us today, although they have got that shot in the yes. fancy co-op now. I don't, had, I don't look too happy, do I? No. <laughs> You're a bit concentrated. I got conned that day. I think so. You got snafu. Armoured and rattle across there. You had to pull out the broken ones from the good ones or any little bits of wood or shell or something. Yeah. That was left in there too. Bloody hell. And then they'd go to the co-op and they'd resort them down there. So yeah, still, so we were our own seeing eye machine. <laughs> so that was a bit rough, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, we had to do our sort. Yeah, we had to do a pre-sort. do another one down there. Yeah, they'd run it over yeah. properly. And then I've got these crazy photos of my cracking shed, which would be an interesting comparison to the cracking shed we saw the other day. Oh, Good yeah. God, and this, is when, this photo is because I got all modern and had that flimmin' elevator that didn't break down every five minutes. That was my first big investment, I think, yeah. in that shed. Oh, and then we got real modern. This is yeah. one of the bit more modern shakers. We had to shake a fair few of the almonds off, get most of them off. And then once you got them shaken off and they dried, yeah. then you'd have to sweep them up, sweep them into a line. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, and that's basically the birth of modern almond growing. Yeah, yeah. And I reckon I don't reckon you were doing too much sweeping here because you got your nice clean Sunday shirt on and no dust mask and no crash helmet and no dust everywhere. So I reckon <laughs> that might be a bit of a staged photo, that one. <laughs> that was probably showing off the showing off the new sweeper. I reckon. Yeah. Anyway, so that sums up the almond growing for thirty odd years and it's still going on today. The thing is that today it's so much more uh, mechanised, it's unbelievable that you, the shakers are more efficient, the sweepers are fantastic, uh, the pickup machines are so good, you just drop them in a trailer and then you get them in off the unloading elevator, you elevate them into the shed and like that bloke said, you put your shovel away, you don't need any shovels anymore. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. As a matter of fact, talking about that the other day, I found one of the old aluminium shovels that were just about worn out, so <laughs> I don't use them too much. No, no. 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 Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having us yeah. and giving us a bit of an insight into yeah. where, where we've all been and what's all going on. Yeah. And, no. um, yeah, I guess for, for instilling a little bit of craziness in your lad. It's been, my, it's been my pleasure to be involved for so long, and I'm so happy that you're continuing on the madness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now you've gone shooting off catching bees as well. Yeah, that's so, it. That's a bit of a problem, you reckon? Uh, bit of a bee, bit no, of a bee enterprise. Not a problem because we're going to need a lot more bees around for pollinating almonds than what the, what we could even envisage. The amount of plantings that have taken place. Yes. So yep. I think you're on the right track. I think we need to do something, don't we? They sure yeah. do. Yeah. Even if it's just for they ourselves. Sure yeah. Oh, Bob, you hit that one. No. That was, yeah. Come on, love, on the video. Quick, quick. Otherwise the machine will go off on me. Miss out. Otherwise the video will go off on me. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're going to take it. Lighter. 
his dad on the first tree, the second tree I should say, showing his style. He's been doing this for so many years now, he's got a style of his own. <laughs> he's got a what? I love his own. That's me, that is. There's the boys learning how to do it. Mark surveying his bunch he's thrown down. John does. Ah, 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 little John. John, John no, I'm a friend. Granddad going for it. Two boys learning how to do it. Hard work. Boys learning how to do it. How to be a farmer. Nice. John, John, here John, we go. Come on, John. Come on, John. Come on. 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 Come on.